Hi, my name is Philip Campbell and welcome to module three. So in this module, we're going to be diving into my favorite subject in business, and that's using financial forecasting to drive financial results in your business. I'm going to show you how to radically simplify the forecasting process so that you can get a forecast up and running quickly, and I'll show you how to turn that into a repeatable process that takes very little time to update and maintain every month. So I'm going to show you how to create a forecasting process that's simple, fast, and reliable. Now, in my view of the world, there's really one big reason to create and maintain a reliable financial forecast. So, you know, you're running a business every day. You've got some historical financial statements that tell you what has happened, financially speaking. It's kind of like the rearview mirror in your automobile. You've got some information about what's happening right now, financially speaking. That's kind of like the side view mirrors. But what's missing for too many business owners is the view through the financial windshield of their business. That's what a reliable forecast is all about. Give you a good, clear view through the financial windshield of the business. Help you answer the question, what's about to happen? Because when you have a good, clear view through the financial windshield of the business, you know where you're going. You can see the obstacles that are ahead of you. You can see the opportunities that are ahead of you. You can see where you're trying to go. And when you have that good, clear view and you mix it together with your historical financial statements and other financial information, you're much more likely to achieve your financial goals. And that one big reason is to help you create a bigger and brighter financial future for your business. So it's all about how you drive growth, profitability, and cash flow. And by growth, I mean you got to always be growing some in a business because oftentimes if there's no growth, that means there's decay. And we have to always be working on profitability because there's always competition out there trying to take down our revenues. There's always costs out there that are going up. The pressure is always up. So there's always pressure on profitability. So we, we're always working to drive profitability. And then cash flow we've got to be working on because cash flow goes past just profitability. Because if you generate revenues and you bill a customer, you've got accounts receivable that have got to be turned into cash. And you've got to have that information to make sure you're turning that into cash quickly. If you've got inventory, you have the same kind of issue. You're laying out cash in advance of being able to sell it. We've got to make sure we have good, clear visibility so that we can fund the inventory that we need. If you have debt in the business, you've got to make sure there's some good, strong cash flow to, make, to service that debt. So it's all about making sure that we've got the picture together so that we're always driving performance toward reaching our financial goals. Because a lot of times reaching our financial goals is about achieving the objectives we set out when you created the business or when you bought the business in the first place. Maybe financial freedom or just freedom in general is part of your objectives. But making sure we got a good solid financial and we have good solid financial results is the key to really making it in business. And while I we're going to be talking a whole lot about money and profits and cash flow and success from a money perspective, I want to make sure that you understand and that you're with me on this, that this has nothing to do with greed. This has nothing to do with just being uh, focused only on financial performance. It's just recognizing the simple fact that in business that if the cash ever runs out, if the profitability ever dries up, then the business is going to go right down the toilet. So for whatever whatever reasons that drove you to be in the business where you are today, it's financial results, financial performance, profitability and cash flow which ultimately will determine whether the business survives and thrives and whether you achieve the goal that you set out for the business in the first place. So in those big picture results that we're trying to drive to, to, every day, every month, there's very specific questions within the business that we have to have good, solid answers to and that the forecast is designed to help us with. It's questions like, how much money are we going to make this year? Which has a lot to do with how much money can we spend this year? How much cash can we distribute to the owners of the business? Will we need to borrow money to achieve our growth plans? How much debt can we pay down this year? How much cash should I set aside for taxes, income taxes? A whole host of questions like that, they're very, very important questions. We need the answers to those because having good, solid, reliable answers to those questions will, make it, will impact the kind of business decisions you make. And if you want to make better business decisions, I promise you that having a good, solid, clear view through the financial windshield of your business is going to help you make better business decisions. So now let's take a quick look at how I define a reliable financial forecast. And this is important because forecasting can be used in a lot of different ways. 
for example, if you were setting some goals or some targets, you might look at some forecasts for the next 18 or 12 months, 18 months. If you were going to a bank to put a line of credit in place or to maybe create a term loan, you might be creating projections to show them or a forecast to show them what you expect to happen maybe next year or two years, maybe even three years out. But what I'm going to be talking about right now, what I refer to as a reliable financial forecast is the one that we use for decision making. And I, I refer to that as a unbiased reality-based expectation of financial results. It's designed specifically for making business decisions. It's not about precision the way creating historical financial statements is. This is an unbiased, this is what I expect to happen. It's basically designed to answer the question. At the end of the month, you always find out with your financial results what happened last month so you can compare that to your goals. The next question is what's about to happen because it's that view. That's where you get the view through the financial windshield. That's what this forecast is all about. And the forecast is going to be put together in terms of an income statement or P&L, a balance sheet and cash flow. And that we always have what I like to call a two minute summary where we basically look at the forecast and say, what's the key insight from this forecast? What kind of business decisions is this helping me to inform? Because I'm here trying to drive performance in this business to my goals and targets. So I want to know what's the key insight? What are the key things that I need to be able to do or make changes in the business in order to get where I'm going? And then we make this a part of our monthly financial rhythm, when I'm, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. So you see how forecasting fits into an overall smart approach to managing results. So this book, Implementing Beyond Budgeting, fantastic read. The author talks a lot about forecasts, and he really makes a fantastic point about what a forecast is really all about. He says, some would call on course to hit a rock a bad forecast, but assuming it's true, it's a good forecast, even though it contains bad news. And the other quote says, I would much rather have good forecasts with bad news than a bad forecast with good news. Basically, he's talking about what I mentioned there as an unbiased forecast. He wants a good, clear view through the windshield of the business. And if the forecast says, holy crap, we're on course to hit a rock, that's a good forecast if that's what's really going to happen because you want to have that information now so that you can make different business decisions to make sure you don't hit a rock. So that's what, uh, why a forecast, we're not, when we put a forecast together, we're not saying necessarily... This is what I want to happen. We're not saying that at all. We're saying this is what's about to happen because you need that information to compare and to make a determination whether you're going to make different business decisions. So here's another way of looking at it. Let's say you've got a plan starting the year. You've got some goals and targets from a financial perspective. And then we're going out in the year. We're getting out to, say, March or April or somewhere in there. And the forecast says, oh, no, we're on course to hit a rock. In other words, we are on course to achieve something far less than our goals. That's important information because you want to use that to say, okay, before that happens, I need to be doing something different so that I can turn these results into something that does get me closer to my goals. And on the other hand, a forecast should, could say, hey, we're not only on, we on course to hit our targets, we're going to exceed our targets. But that's inf interesting information as well because if you see out through the financial windshield, that there's some opportunities that you need to take care of. You may be saying, hey, we're not sticking to that original budget because we're blowing past our goals. The marketing program we have in place is really generating prospects and clients. We need to do more of that. We need to put the pedal to the metal and get going. So the forecast is really informing us about are we on course to hit a rock or are we on course to achieve our goal or are we on course to miss our goal so that we have information to make decisions in advance. So this whole forecasting process fits into what I call the monthly financial rhythm of business or the target monitor adjust cycle. And so here's how that works. So targets are really the key that brings everything together. Targets, goals, financial goals and targets is what I'm uh, referring to here. In the monitor phase, we're answering the two critical questions that you as a business owner have to have when the month is over. And that is, what happened, financially speaking, that's in your actual financials. Did we hit the target? Did we hit a rock or neither? The reliable forecast then answers the question, what's about to happen? Because you have to have the answer to both of those questions at the end of the month. What happened and what's about to happen? The forecast answers the what's about to happen. You put that information together, 
turn it into insight so that then your management team or you or your management team, the people out in the field, operations, marketing, sales, otherwise, know the kind of changes that they need to make in their tactics and strategies in order to achieve the financial targets that you have for the business. And this rhythm is monthly, so it continues every single month because your financial targets may be the same for month one, two, and three, but you may hit, let's just say you were working on improving your gross profit margin. You may say, I've achieved that target, but now my receivables are too high. I need to have some targets related to bringing my receivables down or collecting my receivables from customers faster. So this is a rhythm that's always at work every single month in the business. And it's held together by your financial goals and targets. So actual results are important because they say, here's what happened. Here's what happened, and you get to evaluate relative to your goals and targets. The forecast tells you in advance what's about to happen, what's about to happen, so that you can use that information, put it together as financial insight to make the determination that, yes, I'm going to keep doing more of what I'm doing right now because it's taking me toward my financial goals for my business. It's helping me drive results. If you don't like what the forecast says or the actuals, then we got to be making some changes. you got to be talking to your team about, here's some very specific changes. Here's some very specific initiatives we're going to implement so that we get back on track and that we can hit the goals and targets that we have set for this business.